Hello friends, this video on Neural Control and Coordination Part 25 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we have finished our discussion on human eye, let us talk about the human ear. So that is also equally important as eye because it helps us to hear different types of sounds. And by listening to different sounds also we can interpret a lot of information about that particular object. So what is human ear? It is a sensitive organ which enables us to hear the sounds around us. Interesting, right? That how do we get to know that there are sounds present around us? What is sound? What is light? Sound, light, they are all types of energy. They are they basically exist as waves in the atmosphere. So basically when I say that the ear is able to hear the sounds, it is able to recognize the sound waves which are present in our surroundings. So here we are going to talk about not only the structure but also the function of each and every part of the human ear. So let us first talk about the various important parts of the ear. Pinna, which is the outermost part or the external part of the ear. So this part of the ear, that is the pinna. Next is the auditory canal, that is a camel-like structure like this a tube like structure that is the auditory canal. So this pinna and auditory canal are together known as known to form the outer ear. Now ear is broadly divided into three parts outer ear, middle ear and the inner ear. So these are the three parts of ear. So the next part is the eardrum or the tympanic membrane. So tympanic membrane is just another name for the eardrum. So where is the eardrum? Just after this external auditory canal, you, you this region is no that this region which you see here as the tympanic cavity. So that denotes the eardrum. Then comes the middle ear. So this portion is the middle. So this portion was the outer ear. Now this portion is the middle ear where you have these bone-like structures, the malleus, incurs and steps. These are small, small bony structures and they are the smallest bones in the human body. So this part is the middle ear. So middle ear actually connects the outer ear and the mid inner ear. So in the inside the middle ear you have these three bones that is hammer, anvil and stirrup that is malleus, incus and steps and these three bones are often referred to as the ear ossicles. We have spoken about these ear ossicles in our previous lesson. Next is the eustachian tube. So in the middle ear you also see a tube like structure here that is the eustachian tube. So it actually connects the middle ear with the pharynx. You, we all know what is pharynx. Then starts the inner ear. So in the inner ear, this portion, the portion beyond this is the inner ear. This is middle ear and this is outer ear. So in the inner ear, you have a coiled structure like this, as you can see here, which is called cochlea. So cochlea, another name for cochlea is labyrinth. And it also has the auditory nerve. So there are auditory nerves here, which like like how we have optic nerve which carries the information from the eyes to the brain. Similarly here we have auditory nerve to carry the information from the ear to the brain. So these are the important parts of the human ear. So now we are going to talk about each of these parts in detail and we'll look at their function. So let us first start with the outer ear. Now as I said outer ear is formed by the pinna and the external auditory canal. So the pinna, what is pinna? This part of the ear which is visible from outside. So that pinna is used to collect the vibrations from surroundings which produce sound. Now if you observe your ear you see that it is, uh, I mean, it is not a very hard bony structure. It is quite soft and flexible and that is why it is able to collect the vibrations from the surrounding and those vibrations are going to produce sound. Next is the auditory canal. The auditory canal sound passes through this towards the eardrum. So if you see this particular portion the pinna will receive will collect all the sound waves and then these waves will pass through this auditory canal 
so that it can go deep inside because the waves also need a path to travel inside so that path is provided by the auditory canal and then it reaches the eardrum so this somewhere here you have the eardrum so this is the tympanic membrane or the eardrum so this particular portion so what is this eardrum it is composed of connective tissues and the, the vibration occurs in the eardrum. Now the waves which are coming in the waves have compression and rarefactions. That is what makes a wave, right? They will have compressions, they will have rarefactions. Now in this eardrum, whenever a compression reaches the eardrum, it will move the eardrum forward. Like let us suppose if a compression reaches the eardrum, so the eardrum will be moved forward. If a rarefaction reaches the eardrum, so the eardrum will be moved outward so that is how this eardrum also will keep on vibrating between these two positions it will because in a way it will have one compression one rarefaction one compression one rarefaction that is how a wave is so now when that sound wave reaches the eardrum so once it will move once the eardrum will move outward once the eardrum will move inward so that vibration of the eardrum will continue so it is like a flap of connective tissue which keeps on vibrating as the sound waves reach the eardrum. Now this eardrum also contains many fine hair like structures and wax secreting sebaceous glands also. So fine hairs and wax secreting glands are also present in the skin of the pinna. So where? Here actually. So if you see, you can actually feel the small hair-like structures. What do they do? These hair-like structures actually prevent the harmful substances or foreign particles to get into the ear. Like how you have small hair-like structures inside your nostrils so that they can prevent the harmful substances to enter inside. So similar is the case here. So here also you have fine hairs and wax secreting glands in the skin of pinna. So now when you talk about the eardrum, as I said, the eardrum is made up of the connective tissue. So this connective tissue has skin outside. Outside it is made up of skin and inside there is a mucous membrane and in between there is the connective tissue. So inside you have a mucous membrane that is a slimy membrane. Then you have the connective tissue and outside that you have the skin. So these are the three layers which form the eardrum or the tympanic membrane. So all these three parts together form the outer ear. So what do you observe? What is the purpose of the outer ear? It helps to collect the sound waves and helps it to reach the eardrum where it can produce vibration of the eardrum. Next is the middle ear. Now, in the middle ear, the eardrum vibrations are amplified. Now, eardrum vibrations are basically the sound waves because it was sound wave wherever there was a compression. So, the movement of the uh, movement of the eardrum is based upon the compression and air rarefaction of the sound waves. So, in the middle ear, the eardrum vibrations are amplified. So, amplification is the main job of the middle ear. Now, how are the amplifications done? This amplification is done with the help of the air ossicles. So, what are the air ossicles? The three bones which form the air ossicles are malleus, incus and steps. These are very tiny bones which are present in the middle ear. So, these three bones are arranged in a chain like fashion. So, here if you see, this is malleus, then is incus and then is steps. So, all of them are attached one after another. This is malleus, this is incus and then this is step. So, one after another. So, if you see, malleus on its free end is attached to the tympanic membrane. So, this is attached to the tympanic membrane. And again, steps on its free end is attached to the inner ear. Which part of the inner ear? To the window of cochlea, the oval window of cochlea. So, if you see, it is connected to the oval window of the cochlea. So, this is connected to the inner ear on this side and malleus is connected to the outer ear on this side. So, this is how malleus, incus and steps are arranged in the middle ear. So, together they constitute the middle ear. It allows efficient transmission of sound waves into the inner ear. So, the sound then travels through the middle ear in order to enter the inner ear. 
there is another important part of the middle ear that is the eustachian tube. So what's, what is this tube? This connects the middle ear with the nasopharynx. So if here if you see it starts from here it is a tube like structure from the middle ear and it connects it to the nasopharynx. You remember what is nasopharynx? Now there were three types of pharynx. There were two types of pharynx. One was nasopharynx, the other one was oropharynx. Nasopharynx, the one which the, the area just beyond the nostrils, that space is called nasopharynx. Oropharynx is that space which comes just after the oral cavity. So here this eustachian tube will connect the uh, middle ear with the nasopharynx. And that is why you would have seen the ear, nose and throat, they are all connected because they are all connected at the pharynx region. Now why does it connect it to the pharynx? Because this, now normally this eustachian tube, it most of the time it remains closed. That means there is no communication between nasopharynx and the middle ear. But it opens during some of the activities like yawning or swallowing or chewing during all these activities this tube is opened now why is this open what purpose does it solve now it helps to regulate the pressure within the middle ear equalizing it with the air pressure outside the body so the pressure is actually equalized now too much of high pressure should not be present in the middle ear because very high pressure can cause harm to the eardrum because the eardrum is continuously vibrating so too much of pressure is not good so in order to balance the air pressure if the eustachian tube opens up and so it gets balanced with the pharynx and the pharynx through the nostrils it opens to the outside so that means it gets balanced so it aerates the middle air that means it provides i mean the, it, it balances the air in the middle middle ear i'm sorry here it is by mistake it is the middle ear and it also clears mucus from middle ear to nasopharynx. So if any mucus is present in the middle ear, that mucus also passes through the eustachian tube and it reaches the nasopharynx. And from nasopharynx, then the mucus gets cleared off. So any unnecessary mucus can also be got rid of with the help of the eustachian tube. So middle ear is all about these three tiny bones and the eustachian tube. So middle ear, ear actually just provides a pathway for effective transmission of the vibrations or the sound waves. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.